How was the, the response of the movie? It was close to something that you expected before? It was amazing, yes. It was, uh, I mean, it was much more than I, than I expected. And I think it was way more than I've ever experienced in my <laughs> life. I mean, it was really interesting to see the audience here. Like, the reactions were very different than they were in the U.S. Like, the laughter came at different, you know, slightly different times. And it was really cool. Like, the French audience reaction was different than the American audience reaction. It was different than the Arab audience reaction. Like, that everyone seems to laugh at different moments. So I just thought we should get the three of them together, three different audiences in one screening room, and they'll just laugh the entire movie. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah. This is was, something you could, yeah? yeah. No, it was amazing. Yeah. I, and then, you know, afterwards, there was a like, standing ovation that went on for like, what felt like, I don't know, forever, like 10 minutes or something. It was remarkable. This is something you control. When, when you are at the rising of the movie, you know when, because this is a comedy, it could have been a drama. Right. This is something when you write that you control, do you know what is going to make people laugh, what is going to make people move, what is going to make people... It's a good question. I mean, I think that you, I think that you know, like instinctually, you hope. Like, you, you, you see what makes you laugh or what, what moves you, and you put that in there hoping that other people will feel the same way. But you never really know until you see it with an audience. But you do get some indicators when people read the script. You know, I, was, uh, I knew that I was on the right track because I was getting people reading the script and really like laughing while they were reading it and feeling moved while they were reading it and that's always a good indicator that you're on the right track. <laughs> <laughs> when did you choose to start the movie in Palestinian and then after going to take because the, the right. movie the beginning of the movie is not a comedy. There's the idea of almost killing yourself because she's throwing the picture in the can, you know? Is living a uh, so it's a big question the one just the right. Okay. Yeah. So is it a way of killing yourself or killing a part of yourself and a new birth when you arrive? It's a way, I think, of letting go of a part of yourself, letting go of a part of your life, letting go of the past, and, and almost promising yourself a, a, a new start. I think that that's what that, uh, the throwing away of that photograph symbolizes. Uh, the two characters are very different, because one wants to embrace the culture, and the other one wants to, to get it back, in a way. To go, yeah. You mean uh, the characters of... Uh, yeah, the two sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, I mean, I think that that juxtaposition exists, and I thought it was really interesting to show the, the new immigrant, the one that wants to embrace, and the one who's been there for many years, um, and has felt the weight of the, 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 the response, um, and the homesickness, and is, you know, and has a much different outlook on life in general anyway, is a much more sort of cynical, um, uh, untrusting kind of character, you know, that that's the one who really wants to go home. But she also doesn't have a very realistic idea of what home is. She's been gone for so long, and she has memories of it being such a great place. It's almost as if she's missing something that no longer exists. She's missing her past. Would you agree if I say it's a woman's movie? And why did you put the men um, back? I, you know, I, I thought it was a woman's movie until I saw the way men were reacting after seeing it. And it's, it's really interesting because I have to say that men really enjoy the film. Um, so I think that it's a, it's a movie with very strong female characters, mm -hmm. and I think that that's probably the case because I'm a woman, <laughs> and I have four sisters, you know, and I'm like, I come from a very, you know, my mother's a very strong matriarch, I come from a household of a lot of women, and, and that's the world I know. Um, and the men, I, you know, I think that, I'm not, I'm not certain why they're secondary, I think, uh, I think that they're important, well, you know, like the role of Nabil, that character is very important in the film. Um, so, maybe maybe I'll focus on the men more in the next one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're not really actors. You're, like, no. you're like, you need more men in your movies. <laughs> <laughs> but was also the that. idea that they were more, some, more emancipated, that they were already, maybe the movie would have been different if, 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 if the family was a traditional family? You mean that men represent tradition? No, not really, but I mean they are emancipated from them. The women. The oh. women in the movie. No? Mm. One is divorced. To a and degree, the... And, the, and the wife is the matriarch who makes her husband sleep in the basement. <laughs> 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 yeah, you could say that. Yeah. Because also the, the, po the political things in the movie is just a context because the first Gulf War, and why did you put it at that time? And uh, uh, was also a way. It's never a question about religion, you know, all this. Why did you choose to put all the things up and to focus on common life things? Because I wanted to focus on our humanity. I think that for so long we've been relegated to issues, to religion, to political issues, 
you know, and that's fine. There are very important things happening in, in the Arab world that we need to pay attention to. But we never get to just be ourselves, just be people, just be humans. And that's what I wanted to focus on. So the, the issue of religion for me was very, very backdrop. It wasn't important. I didn't want to, I didn't want to bring it to the forefront. And I thought just making a mention of it in passing was enough. I didn't want to avoid it completely because then it felt like it, you would be in denial of, of something that, you know, everyone is born to a religion. I mean, atheism these days, you know, even yeah. like a non-religion is kind of a religion. Yeah. So, so that was, I think that was, that was the reason for that. Would you say it's a political movie? Oh no, because it's that anyway. I would say that it's um, subtly political, yeah. It's not overtly political. I would say almost by its sheer existence it's political. Just the fact that there is a movie about an ordinary Palestinian family and that there's humor and, and, and it's and there's lightness. I think that, that's a that's a political move. Was it the idea to give people uh, an image? Because they didn't have one, because they only have stereotypes and said it's like twenty four or this kind of thing? Yeah, I felt like, you know, how Palestinians are so presented Arabs in general are so presented as one dimensional. It was about like Giving, giving us dimension, showing who we are completely, because absolutely we've been stereotyped as terrorists for the last, you know, two decades. Yeah. What do you use as reference for the movie? Because uh, we, we can we, we think a lot about John Kevin, it is, you know, about cinema yeah. and everything, but it's really more structured also. And I know you, you've been working for The L World, that has a script writer and uh, everything, so is it being influenced the TV show and the way to, to structure the story, to make the story more um, more, more structured, I mean, than the movie of the 70s. What films did I use as reference for the films, yeah. for the structure? I mean, yeah. actually, in Cinema Verité was very much what I looked at. I, mean, I, I looked at everything from, like, Truffaut to um, Cassavetes and Mike Lee mm -hmm. and Robert Altman. Um, I was really looking at natural realism. I looked at the new wave of Iranian cinema. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I wanted to uh, look at the camera work and the style of acting and really, uh, it was very important to me. The two things that were most important to me in the style of making this movie were authenticity and intimacy. Those were the things that I felt like we needed to bring out in this film that had never, that we'd never really seen before in, in Arab cinema, in a, in, in a film about Palestinians. <laughs> what, what's happening in the stage right now? Is there a, like a, an Obama effect? A lot of comedies, a lot of... Obama yeah. effect. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you, yeah. you've met this question ten times. But yeah, but Obama effect, but the movie was written before. But uh, a lot of movies in the United States, the Eastwood movie, are very optimistic. Yes. There's yeah, no cynicism in your movie. There is no cynicism in my movie, that's true. Um, I mean, there are characters who are cynical, but there's no overall cynicism. And I think that's who I am as a person. I, I, I can be cynical in moments, but overall, I, I, I like to keep a hopeful, optimistic outlook. I, you know, I think that, like, you know, like kind of anything is possible. Like, work hard, make it happen. Like, very much, you know, very much a part of me is Mona. Um, but I, yeah, I think that I don't know if it's the Obama effect. It could, it could definitely be that. Like, hope and change. You know, his his, his mantra has kind of affected many different industries. But I think also. Um, you know, the industry was focused for a long time, I mean, at least with regard to my movie, the industry was focused for a long time in the U.S. on making Iraq war dramas. And a lot of those movies were very political and very issue-driven, and they didn't do well. And I think that people started to see that and started to move away from those kinds of movies and started to realize that actually looking at these issues through that heavy-handed, you know, kind of political lens was not effective. And people weren't interested in that. But... You know, treating treating the issues maybe in the way that I did in America mm -hmm. is is a sort of different way of, of doing it, and, and people are actually receptive to that. So I, I it's it's definitely been a shift, and I think part of it, at least for the reception of America, part of it is because those Iraq War movies didn't do well, and that's why there's a shift now towards lightness and comedy. And apparently, dramas are really difficult to get made right now. I think the economy has something to do with it too. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, people want entertainment during really bad times. They want to laugh. Did you feel different now that you made this movie? Did, did you make it for you or did you make it that people can recognize it? You know, that is such an important question that filmmakers get asked very often. Like, do you make a movie for yourself or do you make it for an audience? And I have to answer selfishly and say that I have to make a movie for myself 
because if I don't like it, I can't expect an audience to like it. So it's like I make it for me in the hopes that the audience will like it, but I just can't think about what the audience will like or won't like when I'm making the film. And I also have to think about what touches me and what moves me and what I can put my heart and soul into. And then hopefully someone can um, connect with that. You know, because it is going to be a journey for me as well, you know, uh, and a long one. Very often, the journey of making a movie. And I think that there's something that I have to, as a filmmaker, I, I want to dive into something knowing that I'm, I'm going to go on this journey and I'm going to learn something really valuable about life and about myself and, gonna, and therefore hopefully contribute something valuable through that learning process. Thank so, you very much. Thank you.